Welcome to Tap Talks by Crust, where we chat about the important issue of food waste and loss over a beer that makes a difference. In fact, anywhere between 20 to 45% of food is wasted across food service and retail every year. So today, we're gonna talk about the Harvest Ale, a collab brew between Good Food People by Salad Stop and Crust. So let's go meet Shen, Chief Marketing Officer of Crust Group, and Adrian, co-founder and managing director of Fresh Creation Holdings, the team behind Salad Stop and Good Food People. Wow, I love this. I love this collab brew. I think you guys have done a fantastic job here. All right, Adrian, I'm going to start with you. So you have a lot of brands under your group, but how do you combat food waste and loss? So I think, I mean, we've always um, tried to run our operations as efficiently as possible. So that's always been something we've looked to tackle. And I think we generally work in very high, highly dense environments. So that means a lot of footfall. And so we get to kind of manage that wastage pretty well. But, you know, with this collaboration, I think it sort of was a great opportunity for us, more from an educational standpoint, yes, um, to try to work together <laughs> and try to, again, try to bring that to a customer and, and hopefully, obviously, in a refreshing and fun way. Yes, yeah. And, and that's exactly it, mm -hmm. right? With, with beer, I mean, it's always yeah. fun. So that actually is a perfect segue to my next question of how did you find out about Crust? And then how did this Harvest Ale come mm -hmm. about? So it would I guess the collaboration or the introduction happened through a friend. And I think, I mean, we, we strongly believe that any kind of change, and especially at this scale, right? And I think, you know, when we look at food waste around the world and, and some of the challenges that we will need to address, I think there needs to be collaboration, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the only way to move the needle is by partnerships like this. So for us, you know, when we looked at it, we said, okay, well, you know, what, number one, what ingredients work, right? Yes. For, to make a beer. And so when we looked at our brand from Habel, we saw that there was some pumpkin uh, rind that we were using and just throwing away. And in the quinoa, we just kind of add a little bit of that nuttiness. And Chen, from, from, from Crust side, how was the collaboration process? And, and can you tell us a little bit more about the Harvest Ale? Yeah, so it's been great to work with with the people at Salad Stop and kind of just witness some of their sustainability efforts, you know, whether it's um, carbon labeling their menu, which is one of the first, I think, change to do so in Asia. Um, and also, you know, waste reduction efforts like this, working with us in a collaborative matter to make a brew that is a Harvest Ale. So yeah, what we're drinking is a Harvest Ale, which is a medium body golden ale that is made, as you can said, using kind of surplus pumpkin waste. Yep. So things like the rinds, the seeds, um, the, the, the core. So we use the surplus quinoa as kind of a grain substitute during the mashing process. And then we add the uh, surplus pumpkin waste with the hops as kind of an added flavoring. Ooh, okay. I like how Adrian mentioned the quinoa will bring a, a nuttiness to it, which yeah. is exactly what I pick up on the tail end. Moving on then to, to the overall mission of, of Crust, how important are collaborations like this? It's, it's really important. Mm. I mean, I think um, our mission start with you know really big problems and obviously across the problem that we're solving and trying to tackle is the massive global food waste problem yeah. you know it's anywhere between 20 to 45 percent of food across food service retail is wasted uh, yearly which is a lot and, actually yeah millions yes. of kilograms you know not yes. just singapore but all over the world um, and furthermore, I think and a lot of people really make the link between food waste and loss and um, climate change yeah. because, you know, food waste and loss is a major contributor to climate change mm -hmm. and, you know, contributes at least 8% of global greenhouse gas emissions, which is more than the entire transportation <laughs> industry. So, yeah, we really kind of took the problem and said, you know, that's where we come in mm. to really help businesses to actually create value out of waste instead of destroy value. Yeah, so our mission is to empower businesses and food service and retail to upcycle their food waste and loss into higher value products and create a more kind of circular food economy. And, you know, like Adrian said, I think the core and key to that mission is all these collaborations that we're yeah. doing with different stakeholders. It's really important for us to work with all these different stakeholders to really create a better and more kind of innovative approach to how we are managing our food waste. Yeah, you, you touched on so many important facts and notes and, and, you know, starting points and where we are in the middle now for the end game. There's, there's so much more we have to do, but again, the little Absolutely. steps, the little partnerships, the collaboration, these are all very important to educate and, and yeah. 
just get it out there. Uh, Adrian, back to you. I'm actually quite interested at the, uh, the, the label. <laughs> <laughs> the label here for people who believe the world is not flat. Could you tell us a little bit more about sure. the, I mean, how I the guess, name came know, about in, and yeah, the those, design? In those days, people questioned about, you know, the world being flat. So I think we, you know, we want people again to ask questions and, 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 and challenge things, right? And I think that's the thing, challenging the status quo. Um, you know, this whole design was actually uh, produced by a teenager who is very, very passionate about all this sustainability and change. So, you know, with Good Food People, a lot of, and when you look at the logo, it, it is about empowering people, right? And yes. saying, let's let's really be serious about this change that we want to yes. create. And, you know, again, going back to the, 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 the challenge that we all face, you know, with uh, with sustainability, climate change and everything, I think, you know, this this sort of statement was was supposed to be fun, yeah. but also something that just makes people think and, and and realize that you know they have the power to to demand that from businesses. They have the power to make that change. How can we encourage or incentivize both consumers and corporate to minimize waste loss, to uh, improve waste management? You know, the whole package. Big question. Yeah. Um, I think on the consumer side, at least, you know, creating kind of fun upcycle products like like this and our other kind of collaboration brews, it's really trying to uh, change the perception of waste management, right? We're trying to make it a little bit more fun, approachable for people, um, because I think the traditional perception of waste management is, is not a really kind of pleasant <laughs> it's one. Icky. Yeah, Ew. it's icky. So I think there's that piece, right? Creating a product that is fun, that people, I mean, beer is a great kind of conversation starter. And like, you got me in. <laughs> yeah, um, so creating an ex you know like a fun product that yeah. people can relate to. It's good on its own. It meets the consumer where it is yeah. in terms of distribution, in terms of price point. And then I think on the business side, I think there's an incentive on the regulatory side because yeah. we've talked about this. Um, the National Environmental Agency of Singapore is actually from 2024 onwards requiring businesses that produce a lot of food waste to be able to treat it and manage it well. Oh. So there's kind of a regulatory mm. incentive mm. to start okay thinking about where is my food waste going, how to manage it. And then from a cost perspective, obviously, you know, businesses lose tons of money from the, the loss of the ingredients, but also the cost of disposing it. I think COVID was, you know, the biggest wake up call for a lot of people, yeah. right? And I think, um, you know, it's, it's great to see that customers, again, are demanding more businesses. Mm -hmm. It's great to see that investors are now looking at ESG, you know, all sorts of new platforms, impact funds that are starting up. Yes. So. Um, I think it's very motivating to see that, again, this now makes business sense, right? It wasn't just something that was just lofty, fluffy ambitions that, you know, people just talked yeah. about. Now this is real, you know, yeah. you can see the impact that you can have. And I think it's also amazing to see how much weight the Singapore government is putting behind yeah. this. Yeah. And I mean, the 30 by 30 goals are huge, you know, for Singapore to produce on this island 30% of its food will be massive. Yeah. And so this is just one part of it, right? If we can already reduce that surplus and try to just find more efficient ways in consuming our foods, that's already going to be one part of the solution, right? Yeah. And that's where everyone needs to come together and collaborate. Cheers, guys. Cheers to that. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Guys.